Hi everyone, Wallace here with your Monday video. Last week I talked a little bit about hobbies that are not having to do with books, but, and one of my hobbies was a puzzle. So this is like, this is me colliding both worlds. So I'm very into puzzles right now. And I think I told you that I had a group of friends come over to do puzzles. I'm in this group of moms who like kind of goes from different people's houses and does puzzles. And it's fun because we actually have a group that likes to do them at night and we have a group that likes to do them in the morning. I'm in the morning group. Um, you can have coffee, pastries, breakfast, whatever you want to do. And then you do a puzzle and it's a fun way to get together. But I, since I was hosting, I was searching for the right puzzle and I didn't find one that I just like adored before we did it this last time when I was hosting. And I so badly wanted a bookish one and there are some like that I found on Amazon and whatnot that uh, you can find everywhere but it, it, they were really I don't even know why I they didn't click with me they just weren't right but then I walked into Barnes and Noble the other day and I found a few that I loved and I had to I narrowed it down to three because they could have done like a million of them but I narrowed it down to three and I am really excited about them and as soon as we do these I am going to allow myself to get some more but I'm going to show you these because if you are a bookish person and you want to try doing something besides just reading um, this is a really simple activity that you can even just do by yourself you can have an audiobook on in the background um, it's really rainy today here in Southern California and we're going to be getting some rain I know the entire like Midwest you guys are having a polar vortex and you clearly can't go hang out outside. Um, so these might be fun things to do. Just pop on your audiobook, get some coffee, you know, find a space in your house so you can put a puzzle together. I actually just got one of those puzzle mats because a bunch of my friends have them. They're not very expensive. You can do the puzzle on the mat and then you can roll it up and it saves your spot and it keeps the puzzle exactly how it's done. So you don't have to fin like have time to finish an entire puzzle. You can roll it up, keep it for later, and then the next time you have time, you just spread it back out and you can keep going. So this is definitely an easy solitary activity or something you can do with a friend or a partner. Um, and especially if you guys want to like, you can have a conversation, but you could also pop on that audiobook that like you're both really into right now, or just have it be your time that you, you know, listen to a book together. So the three that I'm going to show you are the three that I narrowed it down to. There are some other, like I'll show this, this one is from the puzzle company and there's all these New Yorker covers, but this one made me happy because it was a cat looking out the window. Um, and New Yorker, I guess, isn't a book, but it's a magazine and I enjoy it. So this was really fun to find this one. Um, but they have a lot of different New Yorker covers and it's the puzzle Com New York Puzzle Company and I will link all of these down below. But, um, so this one is fun. The, the newspaper is out, the coffee is out, they're looking, the cat's looking out over uh, the New York landscape. This one is from March 1st, 1982. That was when the cover happened. So I'm, I like this one. I'm excited to do this one. This one has a thousand pieces. Last time we did a uh, 500, 300 piece puzzle with three people and it took us an hour. So a, a thousand pieces are gonna take a little bit longer, especially if you're just doing it by yourself. But again, see how much of your audiobook you can listen to during it. Now these ones, um, this one is the bedtime story. So I, there were several different options. So bedtime stories and it has, if you can see, it has like a bunch of different colors of children's bedtime stories. Um, or you know, whatever, not necessarily bedtime. Like, I mean, there's good night moon here. These are called bedtime stories, but it's like, the James and Giant Peach, Pippi Longstockings, Corduroy, Mrs. Pickle Wiggles Farm, which was the clincher for me. I decided to go ahead and get it because of that. Um, but they they have like a heroine one, a sci-fi one, um, a cl British classics one. They have a ton of these ones. And I just chose this one for now. So if you have, you know, you don't have to get the bedtime stories one. There are uh, several different options with this one. And these are also a thousand pieces. So this is gonna be one that will take a little bit longer to do. On the last one, so this one I have wanted for a while. And they actually, uh, I saw it at another local bookstore and I decided not to get it because I was traveling and I didn't want to bring it back in my suitcase. But Amazon Prime doesn't have it. And I looked and checked in my local 
Barnes and Noble had it. So this was actually the reason I was going to the store and then I found their whole entire puzzle section and was just like super excited about it. But this one is um, the Ideal Bookshelf. Many of you are probably familiar with this. Uh, you can find them on Instagram. They have mugs, they have cards, they've got lots of prints, but I had no idea they had a puzzle. So this is the puzzle and it's the puzzle of um, the Universal Ideal Bookshelf. And it's basically like, you know, it says, uh, uh, it doesn't have actual book titles. It says like unforgettable book, book my best friend gave me, book that gives me happy tears, book I read again and again, best book I ever read, book that makes me look smart, you know, those kind of things. It's really cute. And this one's also a thousand uh, pieces, so it'll take a little bit longer to do, but I think this is the first one I'm going to do, and I'm really excited about it. And it's funny because my great aunt used to do these. Let me, yeah, definitely a thousand pieces. Um, my great aunt used to do these. I'm sorry about the wobbly camera. It's my cat. She keeps jumping up here when I try to do these videos. Super professional. So if this is a little off kilter, it's because my cat just knocked it down. She likes to be part of everything. Um, so I was saying my, my great aunt used to do puzzles all the time and she used to do them by herself. She used to do them with friends. And I remember there being this glue that you could use where you painted it over the puzzle and it actually makes it into a picture. Like you could actually frame it afterwards. So I'm gonna look that up because I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I might actually make this one into a picture after I do it a few times and hang it because I just think it'd be kind of fun. And it's fun because you did it and there's like a good memory. So I was actually thinking it would be fun to do that with family. Like if you have kids or if you have like that are old enough to be doing puzzles that are cool and meaningful um, or grown kids or, you know, grandkids that are old enough to be doing that, then you can pick like favorite puzzles to do like of things that you would like on your wall. And, you know, if you're watching this, you're a bookish person. So choosing any of these bookish puzzles or others that you find and then using that shellac and like putting it on the wall and having it be a memory of something that you worked on together for hours and the conversations that happened during that and whatnot. So I liked that idea. So I might actually be doing that. And if I find that uh, shellac or whatever it is that goes over them, I will post about it. If you have favorite bookish puzzles that you found, post about them down below so we can find them. Until next Monday, happy reading and happy bookish puzzle making.